Hello! In this video I'm going to do, and subsequent videos, I'm going to do some bitransitional derivations and other derivations so that uh, we can get a better handle on how to work on biconditionals. This first problem actually is 2.6 LRS 81 and it's a homework problem so you might want to follow along as I'm doing it because then you'll have the experience of having done it and then you'll be able to submit it for points and you have to do it anyway if you want to get the points. So, it's a good idea. Um, this isn't actually a biconditional that we're doing a derivation of, but it uses a strategy that's similar to the strategy we use with biconditionals. Okay, so we're trying to show a conjunction, and it's a conjunction of if p then q, and if not p then not q. That's our conclusion. So how are we likely to complete this derivation? Well, to box and cancel it, we're not going to be able to use cd by itself because this, we're not trying to show a conditional. That's not what the conclusion is. Well, so that means we're going to need to do a direct derivation, and that means we need to actually get the conclusion, and the, the conclusion is a conjunction, so we have to get a conjunction. And how do you get a conjunction? Well, you use the rule ADJ, and you apply it to the two pieces, and you get the whole conjunction. So what's going to happen at the end, we can already tell, is this. We're going to get these two sentences, and then we're going to apply ADJ, and then we're going to apply direct derivation, and we'll be done. So if we have that clearly in mind as how we're going to complete the derivation, then we can see that's going to help us sort of be focused as to where we're going. So, and that's the way we want to proceed with biconditional derivations as well. In particular, what we're going to do, instead of getting a junction, um, we're going to get a biconditional, but we're going to get the two components of the biconditional and then put them together. Here we get the two components of the conjunction, and we put them together. When we do the biconditional problems, we'll get two conditionals and put them together to form a biconditional. But it's the same idea. You need to get the two pieces and then you put them together to complete the derivation. Alright, so we don't yet have any of this though, so we need to think about how are we going to get these. Well, can we make an assumption? No, we can't make an assumption because we're not trying to show a conditional and the only way we have of making an assumption is assume CD which requires that we show a conditional. So the only thing we can do is bring in our first and only premise. So what do you do with the biconditional? Well, you split it up. So we apply the BC rule. And we always want to apply the BC rule twice to get both conditionals. You may not need both conditionals, but um, you might. And unless you, if you only infer one of them and then forget about the other one and you need the other one, that's a problem. So you always, unless you know, oh, I only need one of the two conditionals, I have the biconditional, I only need one of the two conditionals that make it up. If you don't know that, apply BC twice. If you do know that, fine. But if you don't know that, do not uh, apply BC twice right away to get both of the two different conditionals. And make sure you get the two different ones, right? Because when we apply BC, we, you, could, you can repeat it, right? I've uh, got if P then Q twice. Well, we don't want that. What we need, what we're going to need, in fact, is the other direction. And one way to do that, actually to make sure you do that, is there's a BCL and a BCR. So if you do BCL and BCR, then you've done both of them and you know you've done both of them. And BCL means BC left to right and BCR means BC right to left. Okay, so we have these two conditionals. Good. Now if we remember, well, we're trying to get this conjunction and to get the conjunction we need these two things. We say, oh look! That's nice. Line 10 and line 3 are the same thing. So we don't need to do anything more to get line 10, and now all we need to do in, in, is get line 11, or what is on line 11. We need to get negation. We need to get if negation p, then negation q. How can we do that? Well, hmm. The derivation is kind of stuck, and when the derivation is stuck, what you want to do is do a subderivation. And you want to do a subderivation of what's going to help you complete the main derivation. Well, we know this is what's going to help us complete the main derivation, so that's what we want to do a subderivation of. So we want to say control, we want to show if not p then not q. And if we can show that, then we'll have the two pieces we need to form the conjunction, so we'll then form the conjunction and then apply direct derivation and we'll be done. So we can say assume cd, because we're trying to show a conditional now, and we look that we get not p. Can we use not p? Well, if we look, uh, we can't use it with 2, because 2 is a biconditional. We can't use it with 3, because 
um, 3 is a conditional whose antecedent is P and whose consequent is Q. So for MP with 3, you need P. For MT with 3, you need negation Q, and 6 is neither of those. But when we look at line 4, we can say, oh, uh, 6 is the negation of the consequent of line 4, and so we can apply MT. We get not P, or not Q, excuse me, and hey, that's the consequent of the conditional that we're trying to show. So we can say CD, and we have the conditional that we're trying to show. Now we can put these two together, 4 and 5, to give us the conclusion. And we're done. Okay. Oh, no we're not. I put the two pieces together wrong. I didn't choose the right two pieces. Let's try that again. We want 3. Good. If P then Q, and if not P then not Q, that is the conclusion, and so now we have a derivation. So, good. Um, the main thing here is to see, okay, uh, I need to do a, a subderivation. Uh, I want to get the conjunction. How am I going to get the conjunction? I'm going to get the two pieces. How am I going to get the two pieces? Well, be sure to apply BC both ways, and then see, oh, well, I need this. I don't have it, and I'm stuck. What should I do? A subderivation. So, the general sort of lesson that we're going to apply to biconditionals is we get the two pieces and then apply the formation rule. The formation rule for forming, in this case, a conjunction, or in the case of biconditionals, the rule for forming biconditionals, the CB rule, which says if you have two conditionals, you can form the biconditional. And so that's one sort of a general strategic idea that's common to this derivation and derivations with biconditionals. And then the other is uh, do subderivations to get the two pieces. Okay? If you need to. If you're stuck, then you do a subderivation. What do you do a subderivation of? Well, the first thing you would think to do a subderivation of is of the pieces. Maybe that won't be sufficient for our homeworks right now. It will be. It's the right thing to do. Okay, so I'm going to end this video and do some more examples in the next.